So what are the five major steps that every man should take in order to get what they want in love, life, and sex? Well, I had a conversation with Dr. Robert Glover, the author of the best-selling book, No More Mr. Nice Guy. If you haven't had a chance, I highly recommend you to go and listen to this conversation and read Dr. Glover's book. And here is a summary on the five key steps you should take today in order to get what you want in love, life, and sex. So step number one, stop being the victim. Three, th at least three things come to mind. Let's see if I can hold all of those in my thoughts. N not, number one, that kind of being the victim gives us an illusion of control. It's their fault. I'm being treated bad. A second thing that it does is we don't have to take any accountability. You know, I'm unhappy. We're accountable for our own happiness. And, and But if we can blame it on somebody else, we don't have to do anything that scares us, that gets us out of our comfort zone, that requires us to take personal accountability. It is, it's, it's a cop-out. But the, that part that's why it's seductive, I suspect, you know, back to, you know, when we're hunters and gatherers and somebody in the tribe got hurt, that required extra attention and extra resources. And I think that probably felt good because this was a, you know, hunters and gatherers, we, they didn't have, you know, an abundance of resources. That only lasted for so long until the person who was victimized actually became a burden to the tribe. And then they're probably either, you know, you know, slap, slap out, you know, snap out of it, or maybe even just left behind. You know, you're a burden. We, we can't keep backing you along. At the end of the day, when someone treats themselves as a victim, it's absolutely socially repulsive. Yes, they might get sympathy in the short term, but we all know that it cannot last forever. And after a while, we simply cannot spend time with the same person. And treating oneself as a victim is absolutely detrimental. Step number two, don't try to make your partner's lives better. I know it sounds crazy, but here is Dr. Glover explaining. Let's say I get in a relationship with you because I think you need me. I can make your life better. I can make a good impression on you. I can lift you up out of your situation. What happens if all of a sudden it's obvious you don't really need that? You don't need lifted up out of your situation. Or let's say that you actually do go from being in kind of a, a down position and you get your act together. And all of a sudden you got things, you know, firing on all cylinders and you're working well. I, I lose my sense of value. I lose my sense of you needing me. I all of a sudden have a fear of abandonment. Well, if you don't need me, why would you leave? So here is how trying to make someone's life better is going to disappoint you no matter what. If you cannot fix the person, then you have failed in your mission. If you can fix the person and they do change, now they don't no longer need you. So at the end of the day, when you're trying to go and fix someone, when you're trying to go and make someone's life better, you're ending up hurting mostly yourself. Step number three, don't enter into covert contracts. Dr. Glover explained that covert contract might be the most important element of the Mr. Nice Guy syndrome. Most nice guys follow three covert contracts. First covert contract is that uh, if I'm a good guy, I'll be liked and loved. And, and the women I want to have sex with will want to have sex with me. Okay, so it's covert contract number one. They're all if-then propositions. They're all manipulative by nature. They're all unconscious. They're all giving to get. They all have strings attached. So number one, if I'm a good guy, uh, you'll, you'll like me and love me. Number two, if I meet your needs without you having to ask, then you will meet my needs without me having to ask. So if I will read your mind and anticipate and do everything that I think that, that you know, you'll like and, and, and make, you know, as, as part of that still borrowed functioning thing. Oh, you can't meet your needs. I'll come meet them for you, but then you'll meet my needs. Third covert contract is if I do everything right, then I will have a smooth problem-free life. So the three covert contracts are all fundamentally dysfunctional, but it is the core paradigm of how nice guys go about trying to be liked, loved, get their needs met, and order their world. And when it doesn't work well, most nice guys just double down and try harder, doing more of what already is not working. And then often 
become resentful, rageful, passive aggressive, moody, withdrawn, pouting, unavailable, playing the victim card. So covert contracts are extremely toxic in any relationship that you have simply because it is based on the premise that everything you do is reciprocal and should be reciprocated by the other party. It doesn't really work like this because you are not being explicit on what exactly is it that you want. Step number four, don't try to get women's approval. You know, when we're all born, our first caregiver is typically a woman, a mother or some other, usually female caregiver. And it makes sense that our very survival depends on figuring out how to manage our caregiver, you know, and make sure that they're available and they give us what we need and want. And so the little boy around adolescence, the men come, take him away from the mother's influence and take him out and, and initiate him into the scary world of the masculine. Now he just primarily hangs out with men. And these, these, these you know, rituals have existed for, you know, for all human history, as far as we can tell. Nowadays, we don't have them, which means nothing breaks that dynamic of a little boy trying to please women. Boys have always been sought to, you know, seek feminine approval, which you can't ever really get. There's really no such thing as feminine approval. There is masculine approval. If you own the masculine world, the man tells you, here's what you need to do. All right, you do it. You get approved of, it. you know that. In the feminine world, there's never that you know structure of if you do this, you'll be approved of. Ask yourself a simple question. When was the last time you tried to get someone's approval and received it? It rarely happens, if ever. It actually produces the counter effect. When you're really trying and putting so much effort to get someone's approval, usually they don't want to give you any approval. And by trying hard to do so, in compromising your own wills and wishes, you're going to once again end up being very frustrated about the process and the result. Step number five, establish close relationships with other men. Go find safe people, coach, 12-step group, therapy group, therapist, and start revealing you. I believe when men can start being vulnerable with other men, we find out we're not alone, we're not terminally unique. This thing that we thought was so fucked up about us Everybody else goes, oh, I do that too. No, you're not fucked up. You're a good guy. And, and so we got to go do that work, releasing our shame with safe people. That's cool. One of the things that helps me is the knowledge that my friends are the most amazing guys in the world. Truly. Like, I truly believe in that. You know, sometimes when you need to understand why you're a valuable person. Simple paradigm. I have, I love those guys. They're yeah. the best people I know in the world. Yeah. If they like hanging out with me, because for some reason they are, they do like it. Yeah. It probably means that I'm not as bad as I think I am. We all need systems of support where you can be your true self and your friends can be their true selves with you. And it's really important for you to make your life better. Okay, so that's that. I try to keep it as short as possible without skipping any crucial moments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, or if you didn't, please subscribe and stay tuned for more content.